Hello YouTube, this is Braden with Midwest Websites, your solution for business website design and search engine optimization. Tired of dealing with unresponsive hosting companies? Swing by our store and give your website the home it deserves. Link in the description below. Now today we're going to take a look at a feature in cPanel that is used for installing and managing any number of different applications that are available online called Installatron. In order to access it, you can usually get there through cPanel's Applications button up at the top of the page if you're in GoDaddy's cPanel hosting, or you can use the Installatron Application button that's over here on the screen. We're just going to go ahead and click the button up here at the top, and that'll take us over to the main Installatron page. Now, Installatron is an exclusive feature to cPanel, and with it we can install applications brand new, or we can move them from other places or integrate them into Installatron if they haven't been. To take your first step toward any of these, we're going to go ahead and use a WordPress site as an example here. You'll scroll down, find the icon for WordPress, and click on it. And then after that, we're presented with a page that tells us a little bit about the application that we're considering for our hosting plan. Over here on the right, there's a button that's marked as Install This Application. If you click on that, you'll be presented with some options for how to get your website set up on your cPanel. You'll want to make sure that you choose the right domain from the drop-down list here. Usually you want to make sure you select an option that does not have www in it. And then you also want to make sure that you're choosing the correct directory for the installation. Now cPanel will fill in the directory that's affiliated with the domain name that's assigned automatically for you with this portion and it will also fill in a little extra in the directory option here oftentimes the word blog to give you the option to install in a subfolder of that directory to make things simple in most cases you want that directory field to remain blank you want to install whatever application you're choosing to work with directly on the domain itself there are some cases where you'll want to fill in the directory field with another folder, but those are going to be very few and far between. Scrolling down a little further, you'll have options for choosing the version of your application that you want to install. If you have more than one, usually it's going to be best to install the most current version, as that is going to be designed to provide the most up-to-date features and protection against malware incursion or hackers. Then we've just got some boilerplate here, accepting license agreements, automatic update options, automatic backup options. I would recommend that you refrain from using cPanel's automatic backup feature, as what it will do is it will store the backups on the same server as your main installation. A good backup is going to require that you actually go in and download it to a local machine put it on an external hard drive, or otherwise store it in a location that is not on this server. Particularly in the case of shared hosting environments, these backups can also eat up a lot of space, which some shared hosting providers do not like, and will call you out for if things start to take up an inordinate amount of space. After this, you can actually come down here and choose your own WordPress username, password, an administrator email address. As you can see here, these are automatically generated for us in cPanel. You're going to want to replace all three of these automatically generated fields with your own information so that you know what you're going to be using to log in and so that if you need to send a password reset to yourself, it actually goes to your email address rather than this nonsensical administrator email here. Further down, you can choose a website title or tagline. This is a little less important since you'll actually be able to change these in the WordPress admin dashboard, so I wouldn't worry about these just yet. If you already know what you want these to be called, you can of course change them here before you go in and do the installation. That's not a problem either. And then you also have the option to install the Limit Login Attempts Reloaded plugin here with Limit Login Attempts and the option to enable a multi-site, which is almost never a good idea. Steer clear of those. They just make administration a gigantic hassle and basically interlink multiple WordPress sites together in one database. So if one falls, they all fall. Not a great situation. 
and in most cases you're going to want to automatically manage advanced settings there isn't really anything here that you need to worry about with that if you're an expert with specific settings and want to go in and, and toggle them yourself you can just choose the option to let you manage those settings and you'll be given some additional options down here to manage your database and emails set up an automatic backup location off the server things of that nature again as far as backups are concerned you'll want to refer to our backup video for how to do so via FTP and PHP my admin that's just going to be the easiest solution to ensure that you have a backup that's off the server and that you know that it's been taken care of once you've chosen everything that you want to choose here you will click the install button and WordPress will be installed into the location of your choosing if you've already got an application installed in the directory that you've chosen it will also give you a warning letting you know that you've actually already got an installation in that directory so that you don't accidentally damage your original content so cPanel kind of looks out for you in that regard I already have a dummy website set up on example.midwestwebsites.com so I'm gonna go ahead and click the cancel button here if you don't have any content in that directory you won't see that pop up it'll just move on to the installation which usually only takes a couple minutes but let's say you already have a website let's say that you built a WordPress website with another hosting provider and have decided to switch over to a new hosting company well fortunately for you there's a little drop down next to the install this application button here on the first installatron page and in there there's a little hidden button called import existing install now when you click on this button you're going to be given two different options you'll have the option to install from this account which is only going to come up if you manually installed an application like WordPress or Joomla without using Installatron this gives you a chance to incorporate it back into cPanel's Installatron tool for further editing we'll cover that in another video and then you also have the option to work from a different account this is what you're going to use to import from anywhere external to this specific cPanel so we're going to take a look at the options there now in here you're just going to have a few pieces of information that you need to fill in you're going to be prompted for your current website's URL it is going to be important that your DNS is still pointed over at the old hosting company when you're coming in to do this you'll have the option to fill in the URL and server IP address usually these are going to be the same and it's going to be a good idea to fill those in you'll have the option to import via SSH or various methods of FTP you'll want to check with your hosting provider to see what's going to be the best method for getting connected to the server in most cases it's just going to be regular FTP sometimes it will be SFTP and in rare cases you may be able to get away with SSH on the whole I've found that while it is faster for imports it's also less reliable and then down here you'll be able to select your port username and password these are going to refer to your FTP details it's going to be best in most cases if you go ahead and have an FTP account created that points directly at the website you're looking to import so that way when you come down here to the path for where it should be looking at you can just put a forward slash and you won't have to worry about anything else there if your FTP account isn't looking directly at the website's directory you will need to fill this in with the directory path that your FTP account will need to follow to find it if you have questions about that your hosting provider should be able to help point you in the right direction here and then down below you're just gonna fill in a couple pieces of information about the destination as before you're gonna to need to pick the URL for the website that you're gonna want this to install to as before you're also gonna to want to leave the directory field blank and we're gonna to want to just let the database management be automatically handled so that it gets everything set up for you automatically as before if you want to play around with existing options and have the know-how to do so you absolutely can and you'll be able to fill in the information for what you want your database information to be set up as in this section here and that covers how to install applications using cPanel's Installatron application installer 
Thanks as always for watching this video. If you have any questions for us, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. Like, share, and subscribe if this video was of help to you. Definitely helps the channel, definitely helps us get this information out to those who need it. And have a great rest of the day.